I think we're done here. Good call. But are you sure you don't want to take another dip? We still have time. Don't push your luck. Main hall. Main hall. Main Let's hall. Let's do it. Let's get in that main yes. hall. Yes. Oh. Did you miss me? Let's have a good look around. I trust everything was in order. We had a good look. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, back, But we actually have some questions for you. Please, ask away. I've nothing to hide. Right, should I ask about the housemaid? I don't know what I can say. Yeah, sure. Oh, we met your housemaid, Kulin Dahu. She's cautious, young lady, isn't she? What should we say? Uh, no, stick up for her. Yeah, okay. Yes, she was more than willing to help us with our investigation. I'm glad to hear it. She should want to ask something else. What happened the night of the Yeah. <clears throat> Stop accusing some fools. Madame Rodoy, I'd like to ask about your activities on the night of the murder. Oh, oh I'm high in travel. We'll see you or not? Not at all. Uh, no, no, nothing like that. We're just gathering the full picture. I see. Well, let me think. Guests arrived five o'clock, and we all sat down to dinner in this very hall at six. That part went magnificently. The photographer arrived at seven, but it wasn't until seven thirty that we had our picture taken. The housemaid discovered the crime scene soon after that. I see. Is there something else I can help you, Messi? Oh, wait. When what? you're talking to him, yeah. can you, like, click on evidence and start throwing bits? I think we're getting it for the court, to be honest. Because, oh, I see. Though, you can't do, you can just click on it. And that's oh, stuff. okay. I think it is to win the court. We have Get all the information you needed, Falcon. I hope so. Don't worry. If everything goes wrong in the trial, we can always just shit ever wing it. <laughs> we are birds after yeah, all, mate. Shit everyone and fly away. Terrible. Just terrible. Let's head back to the office and get some rest. Oh, shit. Have we got enough? I don't know, mate. I have no idea. Oh, my God. I don't know. Maybe there's time for like one last look at like. Oh, no. when we go back to uh, 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 the studio. Oh, no. I we broke into we it, didn't we? See if he's back yet. Yeah, look, it's a trial day. We need to go back to the course house. Oh, it's just... No, we're going to be late. Bollocks. Yeah, when it has a clock on it, I, mean, I think that means where we have to be. Oh, I see. Let's see what happens. I'm sorry, I'm yawning. It's not. It's not, no reflection on the game. It's oh, staring Sunday... at the screen in this it's darkened the, room. It's Sunday night. Um, it's, been a, it's been a long old weekend, hasn't it? It's been a very long year. <laughs> All six days of it. Yeah, exactly. It's, I, I'm knackered. Falcon and Sparrow, let's play the game and okay, cheer cool. ourselves up. Yeah, yeah. Falcon and Sparrow stand inside the marble portico of the Palais de Justice awaiting the opening of the Tribunal de Grande Instance. I... Oh, um... Sailor went... Are you nervous, Falcon? <laughs> I should say, no! We've got this case in the bag, I hope. <laughs> Look at my feathers, see? Totally unruffled. <laughs> Well, well, at least one of us is feeling confident. I can't must... Hello, Mr. Falcon, Betty Sparrow, sir. She's, she's a southern belle, remember? Is, is there something you need me to do? <laughs> no, no, we've got a handle on things. That... Falcon was just telling me how confident he was feeling about the case. That's wonderful. I just know you two will pull through. <laughs> Let's move in now, fellas. I'll be watching from inside. <laughs> Do your best for me, Mr. Falcon. This is just a horrible slice of your brain, isn't it? Yeah, this is this these is what the voices tell you when to I do. can't find like the pepper. Yeah, and it's like, ah, oh, hello. We will. <laughs> the birds. Are we ready? Yes, we're ready. Good. Let's see what's going down. Oh my God! It's King High Queen. Officer Ibis. Stork. Okay, UV Maxime. <laughs> All right, settle down, everyone. Yes. Settle down. Is everyone here? Maxime, she's a lady. That's here Zero J Falcon present. The defence is ready, Your Honour. Uh, Rabbit Robinson present. The, I've done that voice so many times. Rabbit Robinson present. The ready is your prosecution, Your Honour. Uh, oh, damn, that's not it. I've got one of my notes. Oh, he's flustered already. Ha! Oh, I knew it. New hot. Rupert and I went to Paris Law School together. He was in all of my classes. Oh, was he smart? No. Oh, I guess I've got it right. He always scored the second worst marks in the class. I can only assume that he bumbled through the final exams on the luck of his two rabbit's feet. No. Unless he's improved considerably, you might already have this trial in the bag. That is good to know. But say as far as the Nivrupa scored the second lowest marks in the class, then who scored the lowest? It was me. Definitely me. <laughs> I choose to exercise my right to not self-incriminate. Oh, here it is. Um, ahem. The prosecution is ready, Your Honour. <laughs> and all the jury all present too. It could be Billy Connolly. Uh, yeah, we're all good. Yeah, we're pretty present. Carry for me, stay. Oh, good, yeah. Oh my God, look at these look guys. At Rambo. Look at the dog, top left. <laughs> dog is good, but Rambo is my yeah. favourite. And <laughs> is that a seal? Look at, the, Who's look, that? At, look at the like the crane. He's got a little <laughs> crane head stick as well. That's amazing. 
Hey, Falcon, I thought there were only six members of the jury for a case like this. Why do I count eight? Oh, those two birds with the funny hats are as yours, as yours, as yours, as yours, as your judges. Uh, these two, I guess. clearly said that word a lot of times, Captain. Uh, Everything seems to be in order, so let's us begin. This court is now in session for the trial of Dame Catalane Damiah. <laughs> Bessley! Can <laughs> prosecution please call your first witness to the stand? Oh gosh, are we there already? Okay, um... Oh, uh, I choose to call the officer in charge of the murder investigation, Inspector Valerti, to the witness stand. Inspector Valerti, please approach the stand and recite the oath. <laughs> oh my As God. you will, your honour, I swear to speak without hatred and without fear, to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Jesus. <laughs> Might be a bit hard Can't do that one. Monsieur, no, uh, Inspector, please state your uh, name and occupation for the record. My name is Inspector Justy Valerti. I am a servant it? of the law, a scourge of the gutter rats that plague the city. It's meant to be Jalvair, do you reckon? I've enforced the law for over 20 years, and I shall continue until I bring the infamous Viridian Killer to justice. My path begins 18 years ago. Let's step to the questions, Inspector! Of course, Your Honour. Oh, great. I was hoping we could have one of those bumbling, cuddly officers, and instead we stuck with these lawful goody-two-shoes. Bet this guy would turn his own mother if he saw a littering. So, uh, Inspector, is it true that you are the lead investigator on this case? That is correct. I was among the first to arrive at the scene of the crime. It's great. Just listening to you tell me a story is lovely. And people, you perhaps you can walk us through what you witnessed upon your arrival. Absolutely. Just after 7.30, we were alerted and brought to the scene by the housemaid of Baron Roguel. He's so boring, Percy Others, Paddy. I'm sorry At the scene of the crime, we found Dame Catalin de Manor. She was standing over the course of Monsieur! Greenway with his blood on That's her horse. That's so... That really scared me. <laughs> like, why? I bet people listening in headphones are well, suddenly going to shit themselves <laughs> on the tube. Well, that sounds they? like an open and shut case, in my humble opinion. No uh, more questions, Your Honour. Blooded paws! Nobody told me that detail! Keep it together, Falcon. You're about to be given the opportunity to cross examine the witness. Now it's your opportunity to find flaws in the expected testimony. Uh, of course, I, I know this. You may begin your cross examination, Monsieur Falcon. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, what are we going to do? Cross examine the witness to find flaws in his testimony or his underpants. Select a key phrase, refine suspicion, and the Falcon will press the witness for information. Oh, cool. Ask the right questions to bring the truth to light. Okay, avoid pressing pointless details. Judge Drew don't like that. It's such a simple question. Okay, so we were alerted and brought to the scene by the housemaid of Baron Rogo. At the scene of the crime, we found Damon Castellini. She was standing over the sliced open corpse of Mr. Green with blood and pause. So, what evidence have we got? We don't have anything that can counteract that, do we? Uh. N no, but I don't know if it's like Alain Noir. I think we just have. I mean, blood on our paws. We didn't know before, so we could further question that. But All maybe right. we need to work up to that. The housemaid we know is, or we think is innocent. Yeah, right? well, that's, and we know that happened. Got, yeah. Uh, so the housemaid alerted the scene of crime. The scene of crime, we found Dame Kathleen. Um, so that's not. Those aren't contentious. No. Slice open. We could try those two. It was sliced open, wasn't it? He was stabbed, I'm sure. Well, yeah, but we don't. I mean, we don't necessarily know that. I, I reckon you go straight for the blood on the paws. Let's see what happens. Inspector, you say Dame Kathleen had blood on her paws? Correct. Blood clung to her fur, like if it guilt to a combo. No. Actually, how much blood was there? Whose blood was it? No, well, because there's only one person's blood. It's going to be. They well, no, but they don't have like DNA testing. Oh, do I don't know, but maybe. No, it's it's, it's, like... it's Victorian. It's like post right, Okay, how much mate? blood then? How much blood? Right, how much blood was there on the lady's paws, Inspector? Enough for it to be clear that she had dirtied her hands on the victim's body. We noticed blood under the suspect's nails, around her fingertips, and even a little around her mouth. It's the steak! Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. What I'm saying. You got it. Her mouth, how vile! Hmm, this result seems pretty definitive. Should we have another question about the. Yes. Should we try? Whose blood was. Well, we want to. No, no, I think it's afterwards. Then we press for information, then we. Oh, if, it's, if he says it was her blood, or okay, like, was, I let's don't know, it might... Whose blood was it? Ha! What a question. It was Monsieur Gromwee's, of course. How could you be so sure? I, I object, this line of questioning is absurd. There was only one murder victim that night, Falcon. The blood on Dame Kathleen's paws could only belong to one person, Monsieur Gromwee. Judge, judge, Falcon's trying to delay the trial while asking all the questions. I'm afraid the prosecution may have a point, Monsieur Falcon. I'm oh, sorry, man. Do you have any reason to suspect that the blood belonged to someone other than Monsieur Greenway? No, I do. You do, yeah. I do, Your Honour. Actually, I have more than suspicion. I have evidence that the blood of Dame Kathleen's paws had nothing to do with the murder. This is foolish time wasting, Falcon. We've got him. We've got him banged to right. Yeah. The blood on Dame Kathleen's paws didn't come from the victim. The, where, where did it come from? <laughs> it came from this stake! On the, on the evening of the murder, Dame Kathleen. <gasps> 
Hate a bloody rare steak! Is that true, Monsieur <laughs> Robinson? Mm. <laughs> well, uh, the manner of speaking, I suppose, steak may have been on the menu. Uh. <laughs> then, uh, Inspector, would you acknowledge the possibility that the blood on the lady's paws did not belong to the victim, but, my fine friend, to the steak? Well. <laughs> what, 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 don't answer that, Inspector. It is a possibility. No! <laughs> <laughs> and he flies off. Ooh, intriguing. Pretty, pretty oh, nice. convincing. A little bit of favour with Doggles. Oh, cool. This is awesome. So, Inspector Valerti, is it possible that you arrested an innocent bystander simply for being a messy hater? Now, hold on just one minute, Falcon. You're looking something qu quite crucial. Then Kathleen is an elegant bourgeois kitten. She no doubt brought up with flawless etiquette and a perfect table manners. At the banquet, she would have eaten the steak with a fork in her left hand and a knife in her right, like any proper civilized animal. How could she possibly have gotten blood in her hands if she sucked manners? Oh, man, it's all playing into her hands. Oh, 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 that is a good question, or at least it would be at an ordinary dinner banquet. But as it happens, something was missing from that particular banquet. Something that forced then Kathleen to eat with her paws. It was the fucking silverware. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm having <powered> three. <laughs> because the silver in the house already previously stolen. Oh you my fuck. god, stolen! I don't recall any mention of that in the police report. We weren't aware of anything from the Rugby Hill incidents when we were performing the initial investigation. But as it happened, Baron Rugby Hill approached us about this very subject last night. Ah. Oh. Shoo, shoo. Innocent, perhaps. What a terrorist! Getting a little fair of it, you know. What's the meaning of all this? Uh, bloody steak, misplaced silverware! Oh, no. Inspector, was your investigation so lax that you overlooked these basic facts in your initial report? Lax? My investigation? Judge, I assure you I am the most thorough investigative officer on the force. Oh, but it is amazing that the Parisian police managed to solve any crimes at all! Sassy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. Be on your way, Inspector. Perhaps do a little inspecting for your next case. <laughs> Fuck. Fine. So be it. Messi is until next time. We fucking owned him. Prosecutor, I trust your next witness is ready. Oh, I've got. What have you got? Yeah, yes, of course, <laughs> Your Honour. You, you got a new character, I think. We'll I call for. upon. Um, let's see. Monsieur oh. Robitio. Oh, bollocks. Robinho, the uh, photographer who attended the banquet on the night of the murder. Monsieur Robitio Robinho, please approach the stand and recite the oath. How does it go? I swear <laughs> to speak without hatred and without fear, to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And he fucking passed. Little cliche, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> Could uh, the witness please introduce himself for the uh, court record? Hump. And if <laughs> anybody in this courtroom does not immediately recognise me, I am the great Monsieur oh. Robitio Robinho, the cutting edge photographer and visionary. Listen to the music. I don't, I don't just take people's pictures, I capture their very essence. Just sweet artiste, 2A and PV. You may have seen my works in hit magazines, La Branche or Satia Toot. I can send letters or tweet, uh, tweets if you like. Nice. So, nice. What on earth is a tweet? Oh my god. But but uh, uh, but about communication. Come on, Falcon. It's nineteenth century. Good times already. Come on, mate. Yes, yes. Your works are very um, impressive, Monsieur Robinho. But let's get down to business. Could you tell us your uh, activities were on the night of the murder? Very well. I was hired by Baron Robiel to capture the evening's events. I arrived at seven in the evening, pointed my camera, captured the beauty of the banquet in one fantastic photograph. <laughs> then I billed Baron Robiel and left. Not a true artist. And uh, with, with regards to the photograph itself, what, who did you photograph? Thought you might ask. I brought a copy so you can all see for yourselves. Oh, very good. Let's take a closer look. My word, this is an exquisite picture, isn't it? So, uh, let's see, who do we have here? In the middle, we see uh, Baron Roy Gale, the Lionhurst the event. May. May, I hate to stop it. Fucking <coughs> hands on the clock, May. Yeah, but they're Shit. hands on the clock and they're on usually. Oh, it's 6.30 as well. Yeah. <laughs> on the left we see her senior, Perto Jumo, the father of the defendant, then Kathleen. Finally we see the uh, housemaid, uh, Kula Duat, who I suppose may have snuck into the picture uninvited. As you can see, two people are clearly absent from the photograph. The first is the victim, Monsieur Grenville. The second is the defendant, Dame Catherine de Meaux. Quite suspicious, wouldn't you agree? Just a moment, Monsieur Rabbington. This feels nothing. So the defendant and the victim were not photographed the others. That does not mean they were in the garden together at that point. Hold your horses, Falcon. I'm not done yet. Mm, the prosecution may continue. From behind the photograph subjects, we see a wall clock with the time set at uh, 7.30. So why is that time significant? Well, as Inspector Valerti told us earlier, that was the exact time the murder took place. Do you see, Falcon? Every suspect has an alibi at the time of the murder, save for Dame Catelyn herself. 
Oh, wait, Falcon, that photograph doesn't seem right. It looks different from the one we borrowed from Robinho's studio. I see it too. Ah, photograph shows Cooling Do, Dame Kathleen, and Senor Pertoir. Oh, it's him, it's fucking him, isn't it? Oh, With Monsieur Robinho's photograph shows Baron Guy, where Dame Kathleen should be standing. If we assumed they're not the only one photograph we would take and could you get edited in some way? You should just slam that evidence down. Be like, bam! Inconsistency. This whole courtroom's out of order. Case crimes. <laughs> I can't do that. Well, I suppose you could be a little more delicate with your words. No, I mean, I can't do that because our evidence was legally obtained. If I were to present it, Monsieur Rubinio would ask how we acquired it and the whole trial could derail. In a worst-case scenario, I could lose my legal license and we would be arrested for theft. Ah, uh, well, we don't want that. <laughs> no, no, we don't. I should tread lightly. Your Honour, I would like to cross-examine the witness. Very well, the defence may proceed. Humph, it's a waste of time, if you ask me. Photo- photographs are rock-solid evidence. Mm-hmm. Oh. All right, so look. 7pm, that's fine. We This was all fine. He had a camera. He built... That's fine. He's got his photograph, right? That's our that's our smoking ace. Well, yeah, but it. we can't use it because we no, stole it. No, we can, it. though, because we know that the clock had missing hands. We know that's a separate bit of evidence. Oh, I see. And okay. Because photo- our photograph shows it... Yeah. Yeah, but that's just, Bang like, on. that's just backing it up, you know. We need to actually use that fact. Let's take a close look at this photograph. I see a mistake in the photograph. Just to clarify, Monsieur Rubinho, photographs are different. A different reflection are direct. Re- they're real, aren't they? That's correct. The photographic process leaves no room for bias or inaccuracies. That is most. Mm, curious. A mistake? Impossible! I just told you, Monsieur, the camera is a perfect unbiased device. Photographs, it produces a flawless. Falcon, I'm not seeing any uh, mistakes. Perhaps you could be more specific. Mm, certainly. Click on the area of the photograph. Fucking clock. The clock in this photograph! There is something not right about it at all! No, oh, but not isn't three. that giving you the defence is something wrong with the uh, key piece of evidence that implicates his client? Don't give me that cocky turn, Monsieur Ravington! I have evidence that there's something wrong with the clock in that picture! It's the clock! <laughs> <laughs> I knew it in the photograph! <laughs> that is self-evident. Aha! Which is most curious, because the clock in the lounge of Chateau Crenier has no hands! It... it has no hands? The clock is merely a decorative piece, a talking item. Feel free to ask Baron Orgueil or his housemaid if you have doubts. Monsieur Lavigno, how do you explain this discrepancy? I... I don't know. There must be some sort of mistake. My camera is flawless. There is no mistake, Monsieur. Your photograph depicts something that does not exist in a real world. But <laughs> maybe there was an error in the printing process. An error precisely where the clock's hand should be? Please, Monsieur, don't patronise us. Allow me to offer a more plausible explanation. You, Monsieur Rubinho, edited this photograph. E- edited? I am no expert, but I suspect that you used paint or ink to carefully put hands upon the clock. It would have been a simple task, considering that the clock face was bare. One could even speculate that you specifically chose to include a handless clock in the photograph just to simplify the editing process. I... I... Falcon, your reasoning is absurd. Why would the witness do such a thing? Is it not obvious? By showing a photograph to have taken place in precisely 713 years or the photograph was in a division? In other words, Mr. Rubinho created a perfect alibi. Oh no! <laughs> I'll never tell. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> of course, this raises further questions. Who is the witness protecting? And why? Was Monsieur Rubinho coerced, bribed, threatened? Enough silence. Let's hear some answers, Monsieur Rubinho. Fine, you got me. I'm guilty. I did it all. Oh, no. You all done that. You're confessing to the murder of Monsieur Grenway. What? No, no, no. I've no idea who killed the frog. I'm just admitting that I'm guilty of producing fraudulent photographs. I was ordered to make changes to the printed photographs. And yes, that included adding hands to the clock. You were ordered by whom? I... I dare not say. Monsieur Dabini, I strongly advise you to answer the defence's question. You have pledged to speak without fear after all. With respect, uh-huh. Judge, I fear his claws more than I fear the punishment of the justice system. I shall name no names. His claws, did you hear that, Falcon? That is most unfortunate. Monsieur Rubinho, we cannot and shall not torture names out of you. We don't live under the ancien regime, after all. But since you've admitted to falsifying evidence, then we cannot keep you on the stand as a witness. Take your leave. You shall be charged with perjury in due course. (laughs) Oh no! I can't protest! That's the least I deserve for my failure as an artist. Good day, messieurs. 
And a bye, farewell Roy. to the bye, Roy. Oh God, Roy. Change a little bit more favour. Oh, God, they fucking love seal, us. Seal, kiss from a rose. He's on board. Oh. So are uh, the clock's hands were painted on. So what? It doesn't matter. Photograph still depicts Dame Kathleen as an absent close to the time of the murder. That's the difference. Don't be a dance, Monsieur of Rabington. The photograph's not completely genuine. There cannot be some reliable evidence. Why not? It's still a betrayal of the night's events. Because if we accept that one part of the picture edited, then we must accept the possibility that other parts were too. It is possible that Dame Kathleen was painted out. Even worse, it is possible that another person was painted in. We know that the witness was trying to cover for someone, so all the possibilities must be accounted for. So what are you saying, Falcon? That the house may paid off the photographer? Or was it seen your poor Tardemo, perhaps? I don't think so. The housemaid lacks a means or a motive, and it wouldn't make sense for Signor Prater to implicate his own daughter. Well, surely you're not suggesting that the honest and beloved Baron Morgiel deliberately tried to frame Dame Catalin? Because that would be the most outlandish theory yet. This Baron is a pillar of our community. You would never do such a thing. Monsieur Ravington, I'm not here to throw accusations. That's the job of you, the prosecutor. However... Who, who's this? Oh, the, the, the line. Maybe I should offer my opinion. <laughs> But Baron, it's not time for your witness testimony yet. So you would think, Prosecutor, from yes, I see my good reputation getting tarnished by your bloody incompetence, you shit. I- incompetence? Indeed. It's Let weird when you abuse with yourself, Witness man. questioning. Is that fine with you, Judge? You shouldn't abuse yourself. Uh, yes, I suppose that's fine. Very good. And I trust the defence has no objection. No, no objections here. Fantastic. Uh, before I forget, I pledge to speak without fear and prejudice, etc., etc. Now, prosecutor, ask me what I witnessed over the course of the evening. Ah, uh, okay. Baron Rogiel, um, on the night of the uh, initial dinner went magnificently. <laughs> when the photographer arrived, Monsieur Grenry left to visit the garden. Dame Kathleen followed behind him moments later. Signor Poitras, Monsieur Rubini, and myself were engaged in conversations, so we paid her no mind. After the photographer had left, my housemaid left to go to find Monsieur Grenry and Dame Kathleen. That would be when I heard her cry for help. Thank you, Baron. I. I think we all know the story from there. I would like to cross-examine the <coughs> witness. Do you doubt my integrity, Garson? I am just here to watch over the crew of the world. No! no. Yeah. Very well, then. Hit me with your best shot. Let right. us establish with absolute certainty that I, Baron Rogriel, am an honest mm. man. The defence may proceed with a cross-examination. I am a Scottish Ibis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, line chops. What have you done wrong? Um, so okay, dinner, hang dinner, on. Fine. Dinner what are we went... trying to get him on? Monsieur Gromwe left to visit the garden. De... Oh, my house needs to go the first and left to call for help. Uh, okay, so we have his cigar. Ah, yeah. So maybe it's garden. Yes, okay. And then you can say, but you were in the garden. Let's try that. Yeah, yeah. Or Mummy Housemaid. Baron, we saw the murder scene in your garden for ourselves. What's with all the horses? Ah, uh, it was the last time you visited. It. Nice. Baron Robert, when was the last time you last ventured into your own garden? As it happens, I have quite serious allergies. I haven't been oh, in my own garden mate. for years. Hoisted oh, by motherfucker, I think you've got me bang to bloody rights. <laughs> yes, you say? <laughs> That's amusing. Indeed. That's not right, my fine feline friend. Care to Baron elaborate? Robert, I wish to call you a liar, but that claim does not hold up to scrutiny, you blaggard. Oh, and why is that? Because we have hard evidence that you have been oh, recently. Balls of ash, my word is cold. <laughs> show the court the so called hard evidence. Oh, I'll show you my oh, hard God. evidence, you saucy bitch. <laughs> Here it is. Little nubbin, just for you. <laughs> this was found in your garden. I'm sorry, if there's any slash fiction about this, I never want to read it, but I kind of do. Yeah, yeah, what I want to be? write it. <laughs> to be specific, it was found inside the fountain basin. Right beside where the murder occurred! Ah, uh, a cigar butt? That uh, could, could belong to anybody. And, um, prosecutor, please shut your mouth. I can speak for myself. Okay, sorry, Baron. Ah, that is indeed the remnants of one of my cigars, but I must apologise, Monsieur Falcon, for I misunderstood your initial question. See, prior to the banquet, I hadn't visited my own garden in years. Naturally, after hearing the housemaid's cry for help on the evening of the murder, I rushed outside. I was shocked and disgusted by what I saw. It must have been when I dropped my half-smoked cigar on the fountain basin. You see, Falcon, it's a perfectly reasonable explanation. I would find that believable if the cigar were casually discarded, but as it happens, the cigar butt was found in the fountain's upper basin, a location that could only be access with great inconvenience. And a little paddling. The cigar butt was not dropped. It was deliberately hidden. There are a number of possible explanations. Are there? Because I can only think of one. That is the two. Baron Rogay deliberately hid your cigar butt to disguise your own illicit activities. Did I now? And mm, what illicit activities did. would those be? You want me to spell it out? M-U-R-D-E-R! <laughs> Let's put everything on the table. You, Baron Rue, murdered Monsieur 
that is why you were trying to keep hidden. Directly accusing me of murder? How shamelessly brave. Alright, yes, I'll do it again. It's a ludicrous application of hogging the barons of standing citizens of the highest order. Your allegation is baseless. No evidence, no motive, or opportunity. Oh, fuck off. Uh, uh. <laughs> no evidence. Think harder, Monsieur Ravington. Every piece of evidence points to the battle for the prime suspect. Listen to the music. You want the means? The buttons of the means. There's a big opera right now. His lion's claws are as sharp as a surgeon's blade. Gutting a frog belly would be even trivial to him. Even Monsieur Dubinio confessed just moments ago that he feared his claws. Ridiculous, I'd never threaten a man with violence. You want a motive? The Baron has at least 10,000 francs worth of motive. By removing a business partner, the Baron's share of the railway company increased from one third to one half. This is preposterous. And finally, the Baron had an opportunity. No, he crafted the perfect <laughs> opportunity. He had arranged a small banquet with a very select number of guests. He was aware of the missing silverware, and yet he served steak, a food item that necessitates good cutlery. Why? To bloody the hands of his guests, of course. Then he hired an easily influenced photographer to stage a very specific picture in order to build a perfectly alibi al al for himself. Photographing guests in front of Anders Club to make for easy editing is quite an ingenious plan, it must be said, in review. Prosecutor, are you just going to let this slanderous young to uncontested say something and jet? Really mounting up. Ah, uh, ah, um, ah, uh, um, uh, uh. Pitifully useless. After executing the murder, the Baron found himself still holding a single piece of incriminatory evidence, his finished cigar. He knew that leaving it to this crime scene would raise suspicion, but he didn't have any time to properly dispose of it. So, out of desperation, he threw it into his fountain, out of the sight of his guests, and then you snooping police. I imagine the Baron was hoping to implicate Signor Pertois de Mias into the railway company. Ah, <laughs> blah, 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 and so, yes. This is an outrage, Judge. I demand that you disbar this ranting lunatic. No! There is only one outrage here! And what is that? That is a man of yourself who like uses his wealth and stakes to frame an innocent girl for murder! Murder? You are a bourgeois of the murder? worst kind! How dare you cast on the art of nerve for a lying scumbag of a lawyer to accuse a philanthropist like myself of something so heinous as nothing like a fat cat bourgeois and a respectable, hard working capitalist? No! You are a ruthless man who has slaughtered a dear friend just to reap a few friends. Credulous whelp! I thought to gas you right here and no, uh, like. like. pudding. Pudding. A lovely bottle lovely big of fat. Pigeon pudding. Pudding. Like a damned frog. Uh oh. Da 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 da. Could could someone please restrain the Baron? <laughs> oh, money, <yo. laughs> ah, let's go, manka, come on, let's go. <laughs> Don't touch me, filthy Jack Door. I can walk myself. Oh, we got him, guys. We got him back to right. That is quite a ton of events. And does the prosecution have anything to add? <laughs> I, uh, well, in the matter of speaking, uh, well, to be honest, uh, no. <laughs> well, then I shall now confer with the members of the jury to come to a decision. I ask that the animals of the court, please. <coughs> Patient, then. I... <coughs> Why are you out for a family rubber? Falcon, that was pretty fucking rad. Thank you, dear boy. I just hope it was enough. What do you mean? You just proved Catling's innocence. We'll get a not guilty verdict for sure. Hmm. Sparrowson, I think you've misunderstood something important about the justice system. What's well, that? I haven't proven anything. As lawyers, we cannot deal in proofs. It is just not possible. Uh, all we can do is organise the evidence and convincingly explain what it suggests. I haven't proved Amy Catlin's innocence. All I have done is demonstrate that there is a significant possibility that she is not guilty. Not sure that I understand the difference. Right then, I'm back. I've had my fag. We've reached a decision too. Isn't that great? In light of recent revelations, it's clear that an error of judgment was made with the initial arrest. On that note, we unanimously find the defendant, Dame Kathleen de Mial, to be not guilty. Da, 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 That's da, bloody da, good news all round, isn't it? Da, 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 Ah, oh, Musha Falka, but I can't remember why. <laughs> yes, do. I suppose we did, didn't we? <laughs> we should head back to the office so we can celebrate properly. With Boom. a hooker. <laughs> Big bird hooker. You did it, Falcon. I cannot take all the credit. This was a group achievement. I'm so proud of you both, Glenn. <laughs> I'll go get one bottle of wine and three of our least dirty glasses. And I'll come back with Glenn. You were amazing, <laughs> Mr. Falcon. Much like Glenn. Oh, it was nothing, my dear Maggie. Kiss me. <laughs> I very much like the way you pinned the murder on the Baron. That was an act of sheer genius. Well, I didn't pin anything. So Addison and I just worked on unveiling the truth, given the facts of the case. Monsieur Falcon, there's no need to play coy. The case <laughs> is over. Oh my, play coy. Don't tell me you're actually being sincere. I'm, I'm completely lost. Oh. I, oh, wow, I did it. I totally did it. I thought the goody-goody thing was an act, but you actually don't know. All right, I spelled out for you. Uh, oh, is shit. Is this going to be balls. a cat strip scene? Is this what we've won for, for winning the game? Oh, I she did it! I murdered Monsieur Granway. 
Uh oh. Sexy cat. Sound in the dark, the not drunk and vulnerable, and I seize the opportunity with Glenn. Glenn, it was nothing personal, just business, you understand? Oh my god, business! To increase my papa's share in the train company, of course. My papa always said that the drunk old frog was weak leg. Your confession doesn't make any sense at all. If I found Baron Brugel's cigar but hidden in the garden. Oh, I put that there. I expected the police to find it, but I suppose that was putting too much faith in the brain spare as well. But fairy, but, but, but fairy, fairy, fairy proved that for, yeah. <laughs> it was edited and I wasn't in the picture because I was busy paying a visit to Monsieur Grandway in the garden. Papa knew I needed an alibi, so he ordered Monsieur Rubino to pay me over Baron Brugel and who had hands on the clock. That lazy artist didn't manage to finish all for an even photograph by trial day. It's a good thing the Monsieur Falcon was so imaginative, because that could have gone very badly. Oh, I see, so we found two half edited photos. Uh... That's really cool. Oh, God! What's with the silence? You should both be proud. There are many lawyers in this whole of France who could have won a case like this, even for a bourgeois kid like me. Oh, fuck. I am... You cock. <laughs> I think you should leave. Hmm, fine. So much for the celebrations. Here's the payment for your services, straight from my papa's pockets. Well, adieu, Monsieur Falcon. Adieu, Petty Sparrow Song. Falcon, what do we do now? We kill her! <laughs> <laughs> Let's just make a mask out of her body. <laughs> Falcon. Oh my god, I think it's over. Well, Pat, I think that's you know our first case. Uh, End of ended Act one. with us getting the wrong person incriminated. That's really cool because I, I was thinking like, oh, this must be like the easy case yeah. at the beginning of like Professor Layton, where you immediately go, oh, it was him. It was and him. he goes, hooray! The man with the bloody hands, yeah, the and, guy the, and the carrying big sign the sword saying, guy. I hate dad. Yeah, exactly. Whilst <laughs> dad hangs limp in the yeah. corner of the DS. No, that was really really cool. We we should play some more of this if you'd like to see more. I mean, I think we're going to do it anyway. But if you'd like to see more of it, do yeah. send us um, a message like and do a like and subscribe and all that thing. If you give us like and some subscribe. likes on this oh, video, we'll just like and subscribe more but that was great paddy well uh, done you can your voices were the best thanks I think. you won the voice rosette oh cool what do i win you win uh your shirt tails to shirt. ride on yes all the way to success <laughs> see you soon Goodbye. lots of love bye yes <laughs> no no, no.